And y'all, today is a very special video for me because I have been inspired recently. We're cooking, snacking, eating, and laughing. The Southern Snackers. <laughs> That's dumb. Hey y'all, it is Brandon, one third of the Southern Snackers, y'all. I'm coming at you today with some really, really good quarantine food. Now, I made something today totally from scratch, y'all. I made a hamburger helper tetrazzini for, with some ground turkey. Now, usually the hamburger helper I made is supposed to be with tuna or chicken, but I have ground turkey in the fridge. I was like, you know, I'm going to give it a try. Why not? Um, so if you actually head over to our Instagram, I'm going to kind of post a little video. I'm just kind of highlighting like what I put in this basically. Uh, so you can go check that out there. But y'all, basically it's just a hamburger helper tetrazzini mix as you're supposed to make it with ground turkey. I made some of my world famous hot dog breadsticks for dipping. And then y'all, I'm excited to report that I finally found a sparkling water that I like. Y'all, I found this flavor, this AHA, <laughs> I, I guess that's how you say it. Um, and this is the strawberry cucumber flavor, y'all. I like this. I have tried and tried for years. I've tried all different brands. I've tried Bubbly, La Croix, all that crap. However you say that. And y'all, I have just not had success. I have not found one that I like. I never liked the taste. I never liked the, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but y'all, I finally found one I love and it goes good with vodka. So I'm going to dig in and y'all today is a very special video for me because I have been inspired recently. And I know we've talked about this on the channel um, and you can go ahead and exit off if you don't want to hear me talk about this for like 20 minutes because it's about to happen. But y'all, I've hinted at it on the channel. You know this about me if you watch it, but I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan. Today, I'm going to call this video Why I Love Dolly Parton. I'm going to go into detail about my fascination with Dolly, why I love her, why I think she is like basically out of this world throughout this video. So you're going to get to know me a little bit. You're going to get to know Dolly a little bit more probably if you don't know that much about her. Um, and y'all, I'm just going to dig right in. I hope this is good. I have no idea what to expect. It is popping hot though. I can say that. And it does look good. Like, I mean, it's kind of hot. That's the thing, y'all. I've said this a million times. It's hard to mess up pasta. Oh. So, y'all, like I said, I'm going to be talking about why I love Dolly. Um, so, let me wipe that off. First and foremost, the number one reason I love Dolly is because I'm a huge music fan, which I know. But... Past being just a huge music fan, I'm a huge song fan. I love songs. I love the words and songs. I love lyrics. That is what really draws me to a song. And I think Dolly Parton is one of, one of the most, if not the most, talented songwriters to ever grace the earth. Like, her ability to really pull you into a song and tell a story is just like it's so good and I'm not just talking about the songs that you know and love by Dolly I'm not just talking about nine to five I'm not just talking about Jolene I'm talking about her deep cuts these are songs that she had way back when uh, back when she first started her career in the 60s and 70s as well as some more recent stuff that a lot of people don't know about um so her songs to me are just so powerful. They're story songs. And basically, there's just not that many story songs left today, y'all. Like pop music. I mean, there's just not really that many people really telling stories with their songs anymore. Um, and Dolly does it so well. You know, some other big storyteller songwriters are like Bob Dylan, um, Elton John, I think does a good job of it. Like just people like that, like icons, you know, like iconic songwriters. Um, but to me, she's the best. I mean, and I'm biased obviously because you know I love her, but she's the best. So, um, one of her like most powerful songs to me is actually a story song. It's called Down From Dover and it will rip you to shreds when you listen to it. And the thing about her music is like, if you really sit and be with the music and like take in the words, 
it's so powerful. Like, like, I just think it's so crazy because, like, it deserves that respect. Like, that's how good it is. It's like, some songs you just sit, you bop to, you dance to, whatever. But some songs, you really sit and you, you need, you, they deserve the respect that, like, a movie gets. You, you should sit and, like, listen to the words and the picture that they're painting and the setting that it's making for you and kind of transporting you into that world. And her songs do that for me. One of her most iconic songs is Code of Many Colors. It's her favorite song. She says it in like every interview if she's asked. Um, it's a very, very personal song for her because it directly, it directly talks about her mom and something her mom did for her when she was little. Um, but it's a story and it, it's a full blown story. It's so much so that like NBC made like two movies about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And recently, Netflix has this anthology where they took her songs and made them into, into full, like, full-length movies or, like, TV movies, I guess you'd say. Um, but, so her songwriting is reason number one. That's why, that's one reason I love her. And I'm gonna, at the end of this, I'm gonna give you my top five Dolly songs that I want you all to go listen to. And when I say listen to it, I mean put it on, Sit there, don't talk, don't watch nothing else, don't look at nothing else, just sit there and be with the song. That's what I want you to do, if you if you care that much. Um, but anyway, so more on that later. I'll give you my top five Dolly songs later. But the second reason why I love Dolly is because she is unifying. And contrary to what you might think about my persona on the channel, <laughs> um, I consider myself a peacemaker. Like, I hate confrontation. I don't really love controversy. I don't love drama. Um... Bucky knows this, and that's why so many times on our channel, like, Bucky will bring something up that I'm like, ooh, I don't really want to go there, or like, ooh, I don't want to talk about that, or whatever, and, like, you'll kind of, I know you guys see the bickering and you see the tension when, when that happens, but, but that's kind of why, because, like, I just like unity, and not in, like, a cheesy way, not like, oh, let's all unite and fight, this. not like that, just, like, general unity, like, peace, like, just comfort, you know what I mean? Like being comfortable in a situation. And that to me is one of her greatest traits. Like she unifies so many different types of people across, I mean, she, she unites people across political spectrums, across uh, economic, like all types of people from economic backgrounds, from races, from sexual orientation, from whatever. It doesn't matter who, what, how you think, whatever. Like, she can bring you in and she does and it, it's been shown throughout her career just how like people from all different walks of life love and respect her i mean you've got people who are like the most conservative bible thumping people to like literal like drag queen activists who are like the most progressive people you could think of and one thing they have in common is they all love Dolly. And like, that's what I love about her, that it doesn't matter where you come from. And she makes it a point to kind of stay apolitical, which I like. Um, again, I think that goes back to me just liking non confrontation and not liking controversy. Um, but I love that she does that because it, it means that she cares about her fans and she doesn't want to polarize herself or polarize them in relation to her and her music and her career. Um, while I know some people don't like that, like some people wish that she would speak up more, some people wish that she would really say her true feelings, I actually really applaud her for that because it it keeps her kind of, in a way, human. Like, I don't know how to explain it. it because those are things that like I hold private too. Like, I don't love to talk about things like that openly and a lot of people don't. And so I don't necessarily think that just because you're a sorry or a celebrity that you're kind of required to do that and I love that she kind of goes against that against the grain with that a little bit um so that's reason number two <laughs> reason number three is because of her persona like the the what she's created like she is somebody who and and I was watching the reason I got inspired for this I'll just say was last night I was watching um a and E, their biography series. They did a biography of Dolly that I had recorded. I think it aired Sunday night, and I had recorded it, and we watched it last night. And like, I think it was Lily Tomlin who said it, and she said, "Dolly Parton is who she is, but she isn't." And like, that's so vague, and like, 
kind of just general, but at the same time, really deep and a deep way to look at somebody. And that's exactly how I feel about her. Like, she is so real and genuine, but at the same time, a character. And it's just kind of like mind, like mind blowing that she has set herself up in a way to where she's gotten away with that in a way. Like, it's crazy that she's gotten away with that throughout her career. Like, people laugh at her. They poke fun at her. She doesn't care. Like, she knows the, she knows all the jokes. She says the jokes herself. And that's one of the biggest things is like somebody like her could be, you know, not taken seriously. And that is what I think is like the biggest, the biggest, like the saddest part about her kind of existence is that I think there are a lot of people in the world who view her as just like this big boobed, you know, real Southern grandma kind of thing. Now, like people in our generation who, who maybe didn't grow up listening to her music. Like my, my family exposed me to her music from a young age. So I grew up listening to her music and loving her music. And I remember, um, one of my most favorite memories was being with my grandma and she would like drive me to and from school and I think this is the reason why I became so fascinated with Dolly. Uh, she had on cassette, she had Dolly's Chris, one of Dolly's Christmas albums and also the album called Eagle When She Flies which is like one of her, her albums from the early 90s. And I feel like every time we got in my grandma's car I was like, can we listen to Dolly? Can we listen to Dolly's stuff? Like Dolly's stuff and like even then, like, there was something about her that just, I was totally enamored with. And I don't even know how to explain it. It was just, like, one of those connect, like, weird connections. And I don't want y'all to think I'm somehow, like, creepy, like, stalker fan, because I'm not. I'm not like that. I just really, really love her. Um, but then, like, growing up, my family and I, like, we, we live, like, I grew up, like, four hours from Pigeon Forge from Dollywood, where, Do where Dollywood is, where she grew up. And we would go there when I was a kid, and I mean, I was just in love with everything. Like, you know, I, first of all, I just loved the area. I loved the theme park, you know, the whole existence. And, and she was a big part of that. Like, everywhere you go up there, her face is like plastered on billboards. And I mean, it's, it's called Dollywood, for God's sakes. So, you can't be there and not be kind of surrounded by her presence in a way. Like, like it's just, even though she's not there, she is. You know what I mean? And like, it's kind of like her heart and soul lives there because those are her people. It's where she comes from. And um, if you don't know about her background, you know, she grew up in the mountains of Tennessee, in the Smoky Mountains, from a really poor, hardworking family. She's one, she has like 12 siblings, so there's a lot of them. Um, I think she's the fourth, she's the fourth down. So she talks about this a lot in her interviews, but she kind of talks about how like she kind of got because of that, she kind of got, like, lost in the shuffle a little bit. And, like, a lot of her childhood was her, like, tending to her younger siblings and stuff. Um, but, you know, that's how it was. And, like, and like my, like, my family um, comes from very humble beginnings, too. So, like, her story resonates with my, like, with my mom and with, and with my dad and with their families that came before them. You know, just basically poor farming people. Like, that's what we, that's what they were. And that's what I'm kind of born from. And so, I think that was one reason why, like, I always was fascinated with her is because of how she kind of has this rags to riches story. Um, but not just that, that it was, like, from a rural mountain place, like, where I'm from. Um, and, you know, because, I mean, I don't know, you hear about people who come from nothing, but I feel like you hear more about those stories from people who come from nothing in the city or, or like grew up in like the projects or in say something like that. But it's, it's, I feel like it's rarer to hear a story about somebody who came from like a farm, like a legit farm, you know what I'm saying? Like, like no electricity, like working in the fields that, I mean the whole, all the kids out there working in the fields every day, like that's the kind of thing that she was in and that's the kind of thing that like my parents and and like they're the people who came before them were also in so i think that's one reason why like i feel a personal connection with her is because like i i think i resonate with a lot of her story even though i didn't personally experience that i know my parents said i know that my grandparents did um so i feel like you know i kind of resonate with that and, and it's and it's really um 
It's like... It's touching to see how she came from that. But then didn't just like let it go to waste. Like she used it for so much good. You know, she went back to this community where she's from. She built an empire. I mean, she built a whole like... She turned her city into like a tour, like a tourism empire, and like gave those people jobs, gave them something to do. I mean, because there's like there's not a whole lot of opportunity in places like that. So she was like a real integral part of that, and to me, that's what's so impressive is that. She, you know, she does have a rags to riches kind of story, but like, she's giving back so much. And I think probably she does that because of how she was raised and where she came from. Um, so that's another reason. And then the other reason is just that she is a pure entertainer. I love her movies. I, I've seen her in concert several times. I have always been blown away. She's funny. She's, you know... Her, her fashion and her look is like iconic. Like no one else has that. Um, and we were talking last night about how like, you know, if you look back at pictures of her in like the 60s and 70s and the things she was doing and wearing then, like she was so pivotal. Like she was very progressive and she was wearing things that normal, like other women weren't wearing. She was singing about things that other women weren't singing about, you know, and, and like there's a lot of talk about this and there's a there's a podcast called Dolly Partners America that if you hadn't listened to I would highly recommend you listen to it um, and they kind of dive into like how Dolly is like a feminist but just not in the way that like she comes out and says like I'm a feminist it's like just by how she led and lived by example kind of thing and it's really impressive to think about that and and you know her movies are so iconic like 9 to 5 I love that movie um Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. I love that. Straight Talk, which I don't think that was a huge hit or anything, but like I personally love it. <laughs> um, and then more recent ones like um, like Joyful Noise, which is just like a fun little romp of a movie with Queen Latifah where they're in a church choir. Um, and of course, Still Magnolias, where she plays like the uh, probably the best, I don't know. Well, Dorley and then Trivia are the two best characters probably, but Still Magnolias was such a good movie. And it was, I mean, it's a, it's a great movie. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go watch it. Um, but she's just, you know, and, and it's, and it's like her personality is so big that she, it comes through in like every role she plays. It, it's like she's Dolly playing something. Um, which can be, I think, a downfall for, for somebody like her where you can't really disconnect her from her, from her persona. So you see that even in the movie, but she chooses movies where it doesn't matter. You know, she's that... Like, she chooses roles, and she gets roles where that's what she is. So it makes sense. Um, but anyway, so... Sorry, I've been just talking and talking and not eating a lot. And I'm getting really hungry, so I'm going to eat for a minute. <laughs> uh, the verdict on this is, is, is really good. It's, like, delicious. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. And if you're looking at your Dolly Fix, by the way, during this whole lockdown situation, she's been very active on social media. Um, she's reading, you know, she does the Imagination Library, which is a huge part of how she gets back. And essentially, if you don't know what it is, the Imagination Library is a program where, in, in the areas where it is, um, kids from birth to, I think, 
kindergarten or four years old or something, they get a free book in the mail every month. Um, and it's part, it's like one of her big mission things. And it's, I mean, to me, that's, that's crazy to think. There's like millions of books that have been given away. Um, so she, that she does that. So at, on Thursdays at seven, she's been reading to people, um, She's been reading some of the children's books that have been distributed through her imagination library. So you should go check that out, especially if you have kids. Let Dolly Park read a book to you one night. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so like I said earlier, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, I'm going to leave you with the five Dolly songs I think you should go listen to. Now, these are not going to be your typical big hit songs. These are going to be the songs that I love from her, you know, they're lesser known songs. I'll say that. And so... Um, what I want you to do is just go listen to them if you want to, whatever. They're story songs, so you'll, you know, you'll hear the stories in the songs if you really sit and take them in. So the songs are, number one is a song called Down From Dover, which is going to be really sad, so get ready. <laughs> number two is a song called These Old Bones, which is one of her most, more recent songs. Not recent as in like in the last few days, but recent as in like in the like last two decades or something. It's on one of her bluegrass albums, but it's called These Old Bones. And you're going to hear a funny voice and it's going to make you giggle, but just stick it out, listen to the story. It's really fascinating. Number three is Coat of Many Colors, which actually is one of her big hits. Um, but it's, it's her favorite song, so I couldn't sit here and not take a good listen to that if you've never heard it. You probably have. Uh, you might not know it, but you're probably familiar with it even if you don't know. Number four is a song called Single Women. Now, she did not write this song. It's on her, I think it's on her album. I think it's on the Heartbreak Express album, maybe. Um, but it's called Single Women. She did not write it, but it is such a good story and like it's it's a good like vocal performance and the way that she uses her voice to kind of tell the story the fifth song is little sparrow now for this one i would prefer you listen if you can to the version from dolly live in london because it's stripped back she's doing it live so you get it live um and sh and it's just such a good song it's a, it's a traditional kind of mountain tune uh which is kind of what she lives you know so so i would highly recommend you listen to those five songs so i'm having remorse over the five songs i chose for you to listen to and i just there are two songs that i just can't help but think that i should have included but i couldn't choose which of the five to not include so anyway i'm just gonna give you two more if you want to just do me a favor and go listen to them so one of them is just because i'm a woman which is actually the song that really kind of set dolly up as more of like a feminist and like You'll see when you listen to it. The other song is, not many people know this, but 9 to 5 was a musical, and she wrote all the lyrics to the show herself. And there's a song there, which I think is probably one of the best Broadway ballads ever written, and it's called Get Out and Stay Out. So go listen to Just Because I'm a Woman by Dolly Parton, and also Get Out and Stay Out from 9 to 5 the Musical. Okay. If you do... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on the songs. You know, if you love them, if you hate them, whatever. Just share with me. I don't care. Um, it will not sway my love of Dolly in any way. And it will not make me think any less of you. It is what it is. People like what they like. Uh, but do not come on here bashing her. Now, I will not take that. So don't do that. <laughs> um, but I did just want to kind of share that because I feel like we talk about that a lot. And like... We talk about me just loving Dolly, and I wanted to explain to, to you guys that watch us often why. Like, why I love her the way I love her, and how I love her. That it's not just like a celebrity obsession kind of thing, that it's more like a, on a personal level, I connect with her. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, but anyway, so that's it. I'm, I've got, I put way too much in my bowl. I'm going to go ahead and admit it. My, my eyes were bigger than my stomach today, y'all. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. There's no way around it. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up, but I really appreciate you watching today. Um, if you are not subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the Center Snackers so you get notified. Hit that bell so you get notified when we upload new videos. And y'all, uh, like, comment, let me know what you thought about this video down below. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't just basically blabbing about Dolly Parton and you hated it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got to know me a little better through my knowing a lot about Dolly and my obsession with her. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching this video. And remember, y'all, when life is tough, just keep on snacking. I am going to have one more bite. Mmm. Okay, maybe two. Mmm.
Okay, three. Ooh, okay. 